messing with magnets now? If you woke, do wake up. Whoa. There's a lot of business in the trailer with a giant magnet. And it just made me think in planning that kind of sequence out, how much are you just kind of wanting to play with like, with like something tactile versus the sort of CGI immersive quality of that? I can actually walk you through it. You know, I think if you came and hung out with us, it literally is a, you know, me and my team and we're playing with, you know, my, I actually brought my son, we we're in London and uh, he's like, wait, you just go to work and you hang out with your friends and play with toy cars? But it is great to talk character and we keep playing and play. And once like the, the kind of character beats are captured, then the hard work of, okay, now we got to scan the right environment, you know? And then we start choosing the lenses, the camera move, how we're going to cover it and stuff. And then I have all that design and then I go to the stunt crew and then they bring back the cars so that they can start translate it into their language. So I think the, the element of play, you know, is, is a big part of, of this process, you know, and I, I, I think we've, through time, we develop our own way of communicating, you know, and like there's been times where, you know, I'll be in London and they're trying to do a move in Tbilisi and I'm jumping on the phone going, you know, walking the driver through the state of Letty. I think that's what makes it so much fun is that we never take things for granted. You know, I think sometimes these moves has to come from the state of the character and for the driver to hear it and execute it, it just like, and then you see it. Ah, it's, it's, it's the best feeling because it, by at that point, you're like, oh my God, it's been 14 months you know, from idea to execution. In the trailer, we also do see a brief glimpse of Paul Walker's Brian, and obviously Georgiana Brewster's Mia plays a big role in the film. So I, I take it that Brian is, is looking after the kids. Is that the sort of idea here? I think the idea of Brian O'Connor uh, still alive in this universe, you know, it's very impactful and it's very important. I think when we talk about Fast 9, this is the first time for me creatively approaching it, not as just the one, one film. Because in the past, I've always felt like if we're lucky enough to do one, let's do everything we can. But this is the first time Vin finally talked me into it, you know, and I came back. He's like, well, let's think about it as a final chapter. So Fast 9 is really the beginning of the, the final chapter of the saga. So uh, in doing that, I think there's a lot of kind of room to really kind of place our characters. And Brian, obviously, is a big part of the universe still. Did you feel like it was important to, like, to show us Brian versus having somebody to sort of say, oh, he's off somewhere, you know, doing his own thing? I think that that's always a, a, an issue that I want to always be very respectful in how we present that, you know, and I think that nine, you, you will see that, you know, you will feel the, the presence of, of Brian for sure. There's also a fair amount of, of women in, in this movie doing a lot of action. Why was that sort of important to even more sort of foregrounding him? I've heard that, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, it's interesting. I think people are pointing that out, but I think in the process it, it didn't it was never any different for me you know I think you know I, I I love the character since I've joined the franchise and the fact that Michelle or or Jordana or Gal we've all been able to be kind of part of this family and to be able to kind of grow together it, it's been very special and I know it's very rare in Hollywood especially doing like these sequels where we're not doing the same thing over and over I think these characters are you know maturing they're evolving and we're acknowledging that I've been gone I just felt like there was a need to kind of catch up with a lot of these characters very organically, you know? And I think that, I don't know what came before me, but I remember Michelle coming in going, oh man, Ben, like I really want to get, get, get going and have some, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah, we're doing that. And so it was kind of like we were already in line. It wasn't, you know, a talk. And, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, it, it's, it's nothing for me strategic, except, you know, let's do the right thing. Let's do what's right for this next, chapter. How far along are you in, in developing and getting ready to shoot the two-part finale? It's definitely floating and, 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 you know, constantly, you know, writing, you know, and talking. What I love is that, you know, every time I, I do one of these, it's always a new challenge. And this one, it wasn't just one film. Through the years, you know, I, I would be sitting and, and talking to Vin about something and you, you would not think it connects at all. But then like, as I'm kind of working on the development of it, I'm like, oh, this is like that moment in DR when we were sitting at four in the morning talking and, and it like 
it, it's feeling very kind of inspired and organic, you know? And I know we've been talking about the final chapter for about 10 years. And now that we're starting to see it come to life, it's very gratifying. And, and, and but at the same time, it, it also feels like it's been in the making. It's, you know, we've been, we've been talking about it for so long. So, so far, so good. It's, it's feeling like it's the right, it's the right feel. It's the right move. It's the right track. Do you anticipate you'll start shooting this year? No, probably not this year. I, I'm not quite sure when. You can never have enough time in development with these films. Even though I think there's some ideas, I don't think we're going to be shooting this year. Not today.